and I'm going to share briefly with you three ways that uh, our utility has been involved in solar. So first I want to uh, talk about uh, our universal solar facility which we have built at the uh, E.W. Brown station. Um, this was brought online I believe about three years ago in 2014. It's a, a 10 megawatt facility that uh, covers about 50 acres at our uh, Brown uh, generating station. Brown is interesting too in that it's got coal generation, hydro, natural gas, and now solar. Um, we've also uh, recently started a, a project, research and development project with the Electric Power Research Institute where we're investing, uh, looking at uh, storage technologies. So briefly about Brown is that it is about a 50 acre site, uh, over 44,000 modules and uh, generates uh, 10 megawatts. That's 10 megawatts of AC power. And what I have learned in, in about uh, when you're talking solar, you have to talk about AC and DC. Um, not the rock group, but AC power, DC current. So uh, the Brown facility will produce about 19,000 megawatt hours per year, and, which is the equivalent of about 1,500 homes, uh, assuming that an average home uses about 1,000 kilowatt hours and it will generate power for 4,200 hours per year about half the time, which I think seems to make sense because it's light half the day and dark the other half. We have also have available for our business customers in uh, Mr. Bender's presentation that showed the, uh, the companies that have these sustainability goals, these reliability initiatives, uh, we offer a service to them that we will build uh, a solar array uh, that is specific to them. This would be a special contract that would be subject to the approval by the Kentucky Public Service Commission. Uh, these systems would range in size from about 30 kilowatts up to 5 megawatts and we would build it, own it, operate it, and maintain it on behalf of these customers. And a customer would sign a 25-year uh, agreement with us. And we are actively uh, talking with many customers about these that range in those size, some as small as 30 kilowatts, uh, up to uh, several megawatts. Um, we offer this program in response to th that exact case that this is a manufacturing state, that these are the desires of our customers and we want to be able to respond to them and provide them with the, the choices that they have in their energy uh, selections. And lastly, I want to speak about our solar share program, which is a community solar concept. I want to just briefly show that uh, Across the country, there have been some legislative efforts to uh, bring community solar projects, and you can see two, in two states in particular that jumped out to me was Colorado and Minnesota, uh, where there are some pretty robust community solar programs. These are where customers would be able to subscribe to a community solar array, and that's uh, what we have recently, uh, we had received approval from the Regulatory Commission. I think the green tariff, this, this is kind of that concept, that this is a rider that our customers would be able to participate in. Um, we were plan to build this solar array. Uh, we're going to build it in 500 kW sections up to, and we'll build up to eight of them. So it's a four megawatt site. Um, and we're only going to build each section when it is fully subscribed. So um, once customers have subscribed to shares, and let me go a little bit into what these, these shares are. Uh, a share is uh, equivalent to 250 watts or a quarter of a kilowatt. Uh, there's an upfront enrollment fee on a per share basis uh, to enroll in the program and customers would then pay a monthly fee on a capacity fee, that's $6.29 per share, and then they would receive a monthly credit on their energy bill, uh, electric bill, uh, which is equivalent to about three and a half to four cents per kilowatt hour credit. Each share would generate on average uh, between 17 and 37 kilowatt hours on a monthly basis. Um, we, are, we are currently, I saw a lot of hands that were raised for KU customers, so I would encourage you that if you're interested, you can enroll now. Uh, you can go to our website and enroll in this. And we're about 25% currently enrolled uh, for the first array. Um, the other th aspect of this too is that uh, customers would only be able to subscribe to as much as their total net energy consumption. So this is not the type of program uh, where you would oversubscribe and uh, completely offset all of your energy usage. Um, 
the other aspect of this is this is not an energy saving program because it is a, it does cost more uh, to generate solar but this is a program that we want to offer to our customers as an option to them it's a program that is ideal for customers that want to participate in community solar uh, building solar in our communities uh, they may not have the, the uh, ability to build it on their roof, they may be a renter, uh, they want to participate in solar and that's what this program is about. Um, so those are the three aspects of the solar programs that LG&E and KU are involved in. And so I think now I will turn it over to my colleague. Uh, it's a pleasure to be asked to speak to you today. Uh, uh, as Mr. Gardner says, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'll tell you, and then I'm going to tell you I'm done. But uh, <clears throat> the uh, we're going to talk about our solar project and the uh, the neat things that it, it allows. And then uh, uh, I'm sure we're going to ask some questions, and then uh, we'll talk talk about the questions. But uh, I want to talk about the project goals um, and. Uh, how we got here, so we're, we're wanting to provide a renewables option to our members. Um, I'd like for everybody, you know, we're going to talk about cooperative solar and collaborative. Uh, I see a lot of my collaborative colleagues here that, uh, that helped us come to realize that we needed a cooperative solar, so I'd like to ask all the folks that served on the collaborative to stand up for a second. So what, what the collaborative was, um, was uh, uh, public interest groups, Kentuckians for the Commonwealth, uh, Sierra Club, MACID, and uh, a bunch of other folks. They came together with East Kentucky to talk about how to promote renewables and energy efficiency in the state of Kentucky. And we got a lot of good feedback and direction from the collaborative. Uh, the other thing I'd like to say is that East Kentucky took that uh, direction and we acted on it and that's the origins of how we got to have uh, cooperative solar um, so that's how that got and we've got a collaborative today that's trying to move forward and, uh, on, on some other things so <clears throat> another one of our goals was to keep the license fee as low as possible so as many people that could participate as possible so um, so we'll talk about how we did that as well but to license a panel is $460 and you get the, the value created by that panel uh, for 25 years. Okay. So uh, here are the farm stats. Uh, as Jeff talked about, the, you have to look at whether or not it's an AC or a DC and we're, uh, we're going to build it on our campus in Winchester and it backs right up to 64 and um, everybody that uh, we had two sites. Um, one that was nice and flat, and, but it wasn't on a major thoroughfare, and this one that rolls a little bit, and they said, we want to put it behind your, your facility and so everybody will be able to see it on 64. So we've got about 60 acres back there. Uh, we're putting in 10 megawatts DC, eight and a half AC. Uh, you can see we'll have, we chose to go with inverters, uh, the, the large inverters. You can get string inverters that, uh, that are on each panel and we thought we'd be we're we're more accustomed to working with large pieces of equipment than small pieces of equipment so we decided to go with the larger inverters uh, our panels are 330 watts dc you can see uh, they they look like a very large tv screen uh, they're 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 pretty big uh, and we're putting in 32,300 panels uh, and you can see that we're taking 1900 tracking and we just want to get some uh, idea of how much more energy is produced by the tracking versus the fixed. Um, we largely chose to go with fixed because um, the installed cost is significantly less than the tracking and we also want to see how much maintenance is involved with the tracking <coughs> uh, over the long period to see you know, is the increased energy worth the maintenance hassle with keeping everything aligned to follow the sun as it goes by? Uh, this is a <clears throat> this is a view of the site. Um, these are all um, fixed panels here, 
and this, these are the trackings over, over here. 64 runs across this barrier. There's a little golf course over here and a farm on this side. We happen to have a pond, so we've got a little duck pond out here as well. Uh, we've, there's a eight inch uh, natural gas distribution type pipeline here and we wanted everything to be on the, on the north side of that. So that's the way we're, we're laid out. Uh, we got some good feedback from the guys at Brown <coughs> because uh, they, uh, their panels are, are pretty tight uh, and it's difficult to drive a vehicle down between their panels. So we made sure that I think we've got 13 feet between our panels so that we can get, get do the mowing and other things to be able to, to, to maintain ours. Um, <coughs> This is an artist's rendering of it. Uh, we just broke ground this past week on Tuesday. Our board of directors, we shoveled some dirt and uh, declared the project. We expect to start mobilizing in the next two or three weeks of May and start uh, work on it uh, in early June. It's supposed to be finished by November. Uh, we gave our <coughs> contractor a fair amount of time uh, we wanted to get into the dry season of the summer so that they could they could put it in it's pretty uh pretty amazing um, they uh, we one of the things that we had to overcome was the the soil there is not particularly thick or deep we needed five feet uh, to drive the the uh, the rods in or little h piles in so to, to make sure that we and we weren't worried about the weight it's the pull out so if the wind gets under them there's got to be enough friction or uh, penetration so that the piles don't come up and get picked up. Um, we drove piles, um, found out they can drive a pile in less than 20 seconds. All right. uh, that's one of the benefits we'll see is that and I anticipate they'll take something like this, a laser, and the machine will be on that end that drives a pile. He'll have a target on it to keep it in line and they'll go and they'll come over here and they'll go and they'll just march down through the our fields following a laser and then they'll build the racks and then shortly thereafter we'll have uh, we'll have a solar farm now I'll tell you that the, uh, the 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 neat thing about this is not that we can build a solar farm the neat thing about this is we figured out how to do this not run afoul of territorial assignment, not run afoul of the policies that we believe in and provide a good value to our members, okay? The way that this works is um, you buy a license and a license is like a lease but not a lease, all right? You get all the, we didn't want to have a lease because with a lease you get certain rights because you're a leasee, all right? And quite frankly, this is, a, this is a real power plant. There's high voltage electric out there. And I, we don't, while we want people to get the benefits of owning or having a panel, we don't want you coming out to our <laughs> and, and wandering around looking to see which one has your nameplate on it, okay? <laughs> there's high voltage, there's things that you can get hurt. So, so we chose to go with a license which gives you all the benefits but kind of keeps people from having the, uh, the rights they'd have under a lease agreement. All right, so uh, it's structured as a buy-all, sell-all type of arrangement. You're still going to get a bill for all the energy that you use, all right? At the bottom of that bill, you're going to get a credit for the value created on the, by the panel. That value will be deemed or tied to the value of energy in the PJM market in the real-time energy market. And we thought that's better because typically the highest prices that there are in the market are during the day when the panels are producing, all right? So it'll get the real-time cost of energy in the PJM market. Um, <clears throat> they'll also get a, a capacity credit. And, and I know that's an awkward um, <clears throat> concept for a lot of people. Uh, let me explain it real quickly in that when, uh, when you buy a vehicle 
the energy is kind of like the gas that you put into a vehicle and the capacity is kind of like the payment that you make for having the vehicle, all right? And generation is much the same way. There's a capacity or a fixed or a capital component that, uh, that everybody recognizes and then there's these variable costs that's in the energy and, and O&M. So you'll also get a credit for the capacity value in the PJM market. <clears throat> All right, um, I'm gonna talk to you just a moment. If, if you want to claim, if you wanna say it's, I'm using um, renewable energy at my home, we'll, we'll retire the RECs for you, okay? If you want the value of the RECs, if you just wanna support uh, <clears throat> renewable energy being installed and you want the money, then we'll monetize the RECs and credit you for the value of the renewable energy credits, okay? So you get to have that choice. It, as Jim pointed out, people want as much choice as possible, and we tried to accommodate that. So, um, you know, we're a not-for-profit, and uh, there's, there's, there's no profit for East Kentucky in this. It's, it's at our cost. Um, the, one of the benefits is, is that there, uh, we take care of all the hassles. You don't have to have it on site. You get the benefit of it there. Um, <clears throat> renters can participate in this. You don't have to have a home with, uh, with, with a roof or, or a property to put it on. Um, you, can, uh, <clears throat> you can gift or transfer these. So if you want to buy one and give it to the church, or you want to buy one and give it to your mom and dad, or your sister, or your daughter, or whoever, as long as they're on our system, you can gift them. If you decide that you're going to move, um, and you're moving off of our system to one of our neighboring utility system, you can give them or sell them to another person and then assign them to them on, on the computer. Uh, we've, we've set, so we're, we have 16 member distribution co-ops. Um, <clears throat> that, uh, that can get tricky from time to time when you have 16 different members trying to develop how they're going to sell them, okay? So we, we went ahead and developed a website that all of our members will use to, um, to enroll people into the licensing process. So that was one of the neat things that we've done here, and we'll probably be able to uh, help some of our sister G&Ts out across the United States with this enrollment tool that we've developed. So uh, the question becomes is, how many can I buy, how many can I license? Well, our, we set up our tariff so that you could offset 100% of your projected energy use. And then we've kind of figured out, based on your annual KWH usage, how many panels you can buy. And I think this is set up on a, about 1,000 uh, KW demand uh, would have something in the, in the range of about 30 panels to, to offset your energy usage. Now that doesn't mean your bill is going to zero. That means you're offsetting your energy usage by the amount of energy produced by a panel. And this roughly shows, because you know, as we get people interested in this, we have people interested that don't know anything about uh, how solar panels perform or, or how much energy they're gonna offset. So we've prepared some tools uh, that show roughly what they can expect per month out of, out of the panels.